Hello, welcome. In this video, as you can see from the title, we're looking at some really important proportion theorems for triangles. And for each of these theorems, make sure you're thinking about why they make sense, how they connect to each other, and what we can do with them. Don't just memorize them, right? Really think about what's going on. So here's, here's the first one. The theorem, let's just read it together. Um, you might write this diagram down. It's saying that you have a line and it's parallel, this is the parallel symbol, to one side of the triangle, and it intersects the other two sides, then it divides those two sides proportionally. So, okay, what are we talking about? Well, the line we're talking about is DE, and it's parallel to one of the sides down here, BA. So DE is parallel to, I wrote AB or BA, it's parallel. So that's the first part. If a line is parallel, so here's our line, to one side of the triangle. So our, our line's parallel to the bottom side, and it does intersect the other two sides. It's intersecting at D and at E. All right, so we got these two parallel lines. Um, we're told what this means is that this line will divide this side of the triangle, CB, in a proportional way to the how it divides CA. So it doesn't mean, of course, that this length CD is equal to CE or that DB is equal to EA, but it means the ratio between CD to DB is the same as the ratio of CE to EA, right? So CD to DB, this segment to this one, is proportion, it's equal to the ratio of CE to EA. Isn't that really cool? So you want to think about why this makes sense and not just because it has a cool name. Other, if you're not thinking about why it makes sense, you're just memorizing things, you're not going to get much out of it. Part of the joy of this is to understand why. So let's, let's try to make sense of it. If we think about what's happening with these angles here and here, right, we have these two parallel lines, right? Well, that means that this is a transversal, and so is this over here. Transversals are lines that cross parallel lines. And that means that this angle is corresponding to this angle and congruent to it, and likewise, so is this angle. It's corresponding and congruent to this angle, right? That's a theorem that uh, based on parallel lines. If you have parallel lines and the corresponding angles are congruent, so DE is parallel to AB. That means one is congruent to two and three is congruent to four, right? And that also means that you have two similar triangles. The triangle ABC, ABC, is similar to the triangle EDC because of the angle-angle um, theorem. All right, what does that mean? Well, if you, have two, if you have two similar triangles, it means their side lengths are in proportion. So this side A, right, on the smaller triangle, on triangle EDC, right, is proportional to A plus B, right? There's a ratio between, let me say that away, the ratio between A and A plus B is equal to the ratio between C and C plus D. Right, so this is what we're saying here. The ratio of the side lengths of the smaller sides of the smaller triangle to the larger sides is equal. Right, that's what it means to have similar triangles. Now, this is a proof of the side splitter theorem. Let's rearrange this. The product of the means, this cross product, equals the product of the extremes, this cross product. So A times C plus D and A plus B times C, that must be equal. If we distribute A, we get AC and AD. If we distribute the C, we also get AC, but we all, then we get BC. Cool. AC, AD, AC, BC. What do you notice here? Well, you might notice that the AC is canceled out. In other words, if you subtract AC from both sides, you're left with AD equals BC, and we've got it. What do we have? Well, if we rearrange this a little bit, let's divide both sides by B. It'll cancel out the B to 1 here, and then we have AD over B, and then let's divide both sides by D. The D's will cancel out to 1, and we'll have C over D. So A over B and C over D. I just rearrange this relationship. But wait a minute. What is A? Well, A is C to D. What is B? That's D to B. So the ratio of CD to DB equals the ratio of these two things. And that's CE to EA, and that's our side splitter theorem. Boom. We've proved it. Isn't that cool? So the side splitter theorem is very logical. It's built on parallel lines and corresponding congruent angles and similar triangles. That's, that's the connection there. Now the next theorem is the parallel partition theorem. But guess what? This is built on the side splitter theorem. So what is this theorem saying? It's kind of cool. 
if you have basically three or more parallel lines, if they're cut by transversals, those transversals are they have a a they're they're proportional the way they're cut. So for example, uh, you've got this transversal here. It's cut into AC and CE, and this transversal is cut into BD and DF. And the ratio of BD to DF is equal to the ratio of AC to CA, CE. Excuse me. Isn't that really cool? So that's what this is saying. Where does it come from? Well, we have three or more parallel lines. It can be as many really as you want. And again, in words, what it's saying is if you have three or more parallel lines, if they're intersected by two transversals, so here are the transversals, the parallel lines divide the transversals proportionally. So these parallel lines divide these two transversals in a proportional way where AC to CE is equal to BD to DF. What? Where does that come from? Well, if we want to see where it comes from, we just need to set up the side splitter theorem. So I, I drew a line from E to B, and this line actually looks a little bit off, but this is meant to be a line connecting E and B. And if we do that, what do you notice? Well, you have right here a triangle, right? And this triangle is cut by a line in the middle that's parallel to the bottom side. So we can use the side splitter theorem in this triangle to understand the ratios of the side lanes. So we'll call this point G. So the side splitter theorem says, all right, well, the ratio of AC to CE equals the ratio of BG to GE. That's our first part of our side splitter theorem applied. But look at this. We've got another triangle over here. Also, we can apply the side splitter theorem again. This segment is parallel to this base of the triangle. So that means that BG to GE, which we already have here, is equal to the ratio of BD to DEF. And there it is. They're both AC over CE and BD over DF are both equal to BG over GE. So you can look at this through the transitive property or substitution. That means that this ratio and this ratio, since they both equal BG over GE, they're equal to each other, right? And that's what this is saying. AC over CE equals BD over DF. So I think the takeaway for you should be that, oh, the parallel partition theorem is built on the side splitter theorem, which is built on parallel lines and corresponding um, congruent angles and similar triangles. They're all connected to each other. Let's do one more. So this one right here is, is maybe no surprise based on what you're given. It's called essentially the bisector theorem. So let's take a look at this one. We get triangle ABD. Right, so here's A, here's B, and here's D. And we're told that AC bisects BAD. So here's AC, there it is. And it's bisecting B to A to D, this angle up here. And interestingly, <laughs> This is true. If, if we're given that setup, it turns out the ratio of BC to CD, so essentially the side here that's across from that bisected angle, the ratio of those two segments equals the ratio of the segments that form the angle, AB to AD. That is not at all intuitive to me, right? That is like a shocking thing. What? Oh my gosh. So BC to CD equals AB to AD. How do we prove it? All right. Well, let's set up the basics here, and then I'll explain the proof in general and then show it. So let's just go back. What we're going to do is construct a parallel line here. So this line that we're constructing is going to be parallel to AC. That's the first thing we're going to do. And eventually, if we draw that line up here, we can extend the line AD to cross it somewhere over here. All right? And that's all we did here. We construct this line so it's parallel to AC. And then we connect this line, extend it. You can always extend a line to meet that parallel line at point E. And this is the template we need to prove that the ratio of BC to CD equals AB to AD. All right. How are we going to basically do that? Well, once we have this setup, we have parallel lines. We're going to have alternate interior angles that we can use. So, for example, one is congruent to three. Right. Alternate interior angles are congruent when you have parallel lines, but also two is congruent to four. Why? Well, we have a parallel line and a parallel line cut by this transversal here, so they're corresponding congruent angles. Now, those angles give us everything we need to start figuring out why this ratio makes sense. If you look at this, we have this triangle A, B, E. And in that triangle right there, right, if one is congruent to three, and two is congruent to four, we also know, amazingly, that one and two are congruent. Why? 
because AC has bisected the angle. So let's just say that, right? One is congruent to two, which is congruent to four, and then one is also congruent to three. So they're actually all congruent to each other, right? One and two and three and four are all congruent. Really cool. How does it help us? Well, if three and four are congruent to each other, then the sides across from them are also equal to each other. All right, so side AE is congruent to AB. That's really useful. And also, you might notice that with all of these angles, we can maybe set up some triangles that relate our sine waves. So let's take a look at that, all right? Well, apparently I animated this twice. Let me go past that. All right, so there's our triangle, and here are our two given statements. Let's start building it. One is congruent to two. Why? Because this ray AC bisects the angle, so you have two congruent angles. That's, that's what this is saying. We can draw a EB. So it's parallel to AC, and that's just a construction, right? So here's the line EB, it's parallel to AC. We can extend DA to intersect EB and E. So here's the extension of DA, keeps going. That's also a construction, or you can say a line can be extended. Now, hold on. BC over CD equals EA over AD. Let's look at that. BC over CD has to be equal to EA over a d what tells us that well let's look at this we have wait we have a big triangle cut by a parallel line that's the side splitter theorem from this perspective this line is parallel right to the base essentially if we call this the base of the triangle which means the ratio of these sides is the same as the ratio of e to a and a to d so b to c to c to d that ratio is the same as e a to a d side splitter theorem comes to the rescue so again all these theorems they are connected. The size theorem, the theorem comes in handy. So as we said, one is congruent to three because alternate interior angles are congruent if you have parallel lines. And so two and four are congruent because if you have parallel lines, corresponding angles are congruent. But three and four are also congruent to each other by the transitive property, right? One is congruent to two. Two is congruent to four. One is con they're all congruent to each other, in fact. All right, but EA is congruent to AB. Again, essentially, we have a nice isosceles triangle here. We have two equal angles in a triangle, then the, the sides across from them are congruent. And wait a minute, if EA is equal to AB, let's go back to your ratio here and swap out EA for AB. And that's exactly the thing we're trying to prove. So in the end, we've got our proof. By substitution, we can substitute the statement in 10 into 6, and we're finished. Amazing. So all the theorems today, side splitter theorem, um, the uh, the parallel uh, partition theorem, excuse me, and the bisecting theorem right here, the angle bisecting, they're all connected. They build on each other. So it tells a story of the logic between them when you really try to understand it. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.